who contacted you after the buyout? Um, how it went down was is um, uh, Vince and them showed up. To, I mean, Shane and WWF showed up in Panama City, unannounced. Nobody knew it, and I was with I rode with the company, Sting, Luger, Goldberg, is who I hung out with. Dallas Pages. I mean, we hung with everybody. So all the guys that were late were showing up to Panama City, the stars, and we're late. And all of a sudden, I noticed the trucks are there. And I go, hey, guys, what is that? And they, those boys knew more than I knew. They look and go, oh, shit. And it was the WWF trucks. Right. And we were like, so we all just separated and went to the people we know to see what was going on. And, um, and before we could even get anything found out, they were like, hey, Shane McMahon's got a meeting and right in this room in two minutes. So we all get in the room and the whole company was in this kind of small room. And, but everybody was in there, everybody. And Shane goes, he walked in and goes, uh, my name's Shane McMahon. He goes, I, uh, we own World Championship Wrestling. Um, we want to let you guys know we are going to keep some wrestlers. We're going to fire some wrestlers. We're going to keep some referees. We're going to fire some referees. We're going to keep some office staff. We're going to fire some office staff. And he goes, so good luck. And about half the guys went. And about and I looked at Luger, and Luger wasn't doing this, so I didn't. <laughs> I did what Luger did. And <laughs> Luger didn't do that, so I didn't do it. And uh, so um, – that after that meeting, of course, it kind of whittled down that you needed to be on that show that night, obviously. And me and Lex wasn't on it. And I was like, and we were totally buffed. I was like, what? So I went and got my car depressed. Like, you got to be kidding me. I can't believe we're on the show. We're not going to make it. I started to leave. And here's Lex Luger running to, to me. I'm like, this is either bad or good. So I said, what's up, bro? He goes, we're on the show. We're on the show. So I'm like, all right. So I get my bags back out, go back in. And it was an interview. That's I've never even seen what I'm telling you about right now. But on that show that Vince talked in Cleveland to Shane McMahon and Panama City on that show, I am on an interview on that show, but it was pre-taped and I've never seen it. So I was heading home uh, from that show from Panama City, depressed as hell and my phone rings it's my dad and he goes hey man he goes are you are you watching the show and i go nah so i'm heading home man i'm just depressed kind of down you know, he goes, i know man he goes but listen i got some good news for you i said what he goes well i'm watching the show and uh vince and him are talking and vince is in cleveland and da, da, da. i go okay he goes well he mentioned five names and you were one of the five and i went what and he goes yeah and he goes and this is my dad saying it, but he goes, now I'm not just saying this. He goes, but you got the second biggest pop. And I went, really? And he went, yeah. He, uh, so I didn't quite know how big that was. And then I talked to Lex and Sting and they were like, bro, Vince McMahon just does not say your name. So if he said your name, you're in. He goes, I'm telling you. So the per their perception was I was fine no problems went to wrestling school that they want us to go to which i thought was ridiculous but i did didn't say a word i um i signed a 90 percent cut and pay contract <laughs> making 175 thousand a year um and um i had to sell everything my house every i was still making great money but i couldn't afford what i was living like you know so there with the motorcycles the cars the house and you know, all that went and so, and then um, two weeks later, you know, there I went, which again, set another record from being the only professional wrestler in the history of time to be main event one week and fired the next. That's heat, bro. That's the amount of heat that nobody deserves. That's the amount of heat that things like, things like, your mother called us is why we're firing you. Rumors happen. That's where your match with Booker T wasn't good. So we're firing you. Rumors happen. It just, it's just ridiculous. Who gets fired over a bad match? 
What about, what about all your friends from WCW that were in WWE? Did they have your back? Like, what happened? Well, yeah. I they didn't walked know into Stone. I saw Stone Cold, bro, and I, my eyes just lit up. Do you know how many times I wrestled Steve Austin? I mean, maybe a hundred times. I went, right. Steve, what's going on, man? What's so up? I was like, Steve? And bro, it was like that with all of them, man. It was, it was, I was a threat and they didn't like it. And so it was just, it was what it was for me. I mean, so, you know, I had to, I had to make the best of it, but so they make me and Booker T main event in Tacoma, Washington. Again, we knew, we knew there it was over because why would you put Booker T and Buff Bagwell in Tacoma, Washington? And in seven days, we're going to be in Atlanta. Why would you wait seven days to do the, to do the, um, the invasion match? The, it was the invasion match, you know, the invasion of WCW. Why not do the invasion match in Dead Turner's backyard? Right. And Booker T and Buff Bagwell at the Georgia Dome. You know, instead we got the hell boot out of us in a WWF town a week before the invasion should have happened. So it was just ridiculous. So I got fired in Atlanta. So, so now that you're older, years gone by, you have hindsight. What do you think the number one reason why it didn't work for you that WWF was? I mean, it's, it's took me a long time to come to this because I still don't know. And I, honest to God, I would give a contract up over the just knowing the facts. I really would. They say, hey, right. do you really want to know what happened or do you do you want a job? I'd be like, I really want to know what happened. And um, so that's not the case. You can't figure out that. It don't go that easy. So what I've came up with is my own determination is everybody's finally decided on this. It's got nothing to do with the match. Right. It's got nothing to do with the mother. Right. But the heat I had at the end of WCW was okay because everybody knew Marcus Bagwell at WCW. Oh, that's just Bagwell. That's just Bagwell. But at WWF, well, who's this Bagwell guy? So right. nobody knew me there. So they didn't know how to take it. So the things they were hearing were heat. So it just came from a, from them not knowing me is all I can think. And I got in trouble. I, I, I knocked out um, Shane Helms. Um, you know, I, I didn't knock him out, but I, I mean, I almost knocked him out. I open hand slapped him in, in, at, the, at the wrestling school one day and he hit me in the back of the head with a, with a water bottle, that, with a frozen water bottle, like a brick. And, you know, gave me 20, I had 20 staples in my head the night I wrestled Booker T. And again, nobody talks about that stuff, you know, um, and nobody talks about that and use their doctors. I went to my own doctor and paid my own money. So those are the things you don't get to see, you know, no, nobody talks about, but it was a really shady thing that went on. And it just, I think they just wanted to show everybody that, um, that they, we start better getting, start getting along or, or, or there was going to be trouble. And I think I was a sacrificial lamb to that project.